Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we have the LK67. I don't know how long you've been in the hobby, but um, I was around when the LK67 first came out from Gamma K and even though it's a tray mounted steel plate keyboard, it still has a place in my heart. It's one of my favorites. Now this one I have modded numerous times although after pulling it out there's more mods i want to do to it right now because i think i can make it sound even better than it is and this one actually has a aftermarket uh, pc plate so it sounds much better actually has a bit of softness to it because there's a little bit of give um, though it is a still a tray mounted but why am i bringing up the gamma k lk67 today i I'd attempted to reach out to Gamma K a few times, but um, I think my threshold wasn't high enough for them to want to work with me. Um, but not too long ago, I received an email from them and they said, hey, we we're releasing three versions of a new keyboard and we'd love for you to review them. And I was like, all right, send them on. And just like with everything else, um, they didn't offer, but I don't accept uh, paid um, videos because I, I, that, that's commercials and what's the point of me making commercials um so the only thing that i take in in exchange for you know reviewing it is the actual unit so um but i'm always honest and uh with some companies that has worked out great they appreciate my feedback and even if it's critical because they want to make a better product so you know they continue to work with me but there are some companies that seem to take it personal when it's like, hey, this isn't personal. This is just what I found from the keyboard. And they then decide not to work with me after that. But anyway, I Gamma K reached out to me and they say, hey, we've got three keyboards. Would you like to take a look at them? And I said, absolutely. I've always enjoyed uh, Gamma K boards. I've got a couple other ones. I can't think of the model names right now. They are older. Um, and I, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say they're part of Warmier and XVX, but I could be wrong. There's just uh, all those companies are very just commingled and it's hard to get where one ends and another one begins, if that makes any sense. All right, so here we are with the three TK75 keyboards. Now we have three different editions. We have the TK75-SE, which is basically the entry, entry level uh, keyboard of this series. We have the TK75 standard, which is one a step up. Plus it has the option for more, um, better selection of switches available to it. And then we have the TK75 HG or Hall Effect magnetic keyboard where you can actually set in software your actuation point. So today I'm just going to do a quick overview of all three of the keyboards. Then I'm going to come back and do my standard review on all three with the specs, with the price, with the features, with my thoughts and everything like that. But today I kind of just want to introduce you to each and every single one of them. But we're going to go ahead and start from the basic. We're going to go ahead and start from the intro level TK75, the SE, and move our way on up. We see that we have a pretty standard box. It shows us that we have hot swap switches, 16.8 million RGB colors, multi-platform compatible, a multimedia knob, and it is a wired 2.4 and Bluetooth. So this is a three more, this is a three mode 75% keyboard. All right, before we take a look at the keyboard, let's see what we have in the box. We have a user manual. We have a nylon braided USB-A to USB-C cable. We have three extra switches. We have your standard wire switch and keycap cord. And we have a couple of extra keys. They appear to be the Mac modifiers. Always nice to see. And here we are with the TK75 SE. And I gotta say, it's got the 9009 colorway and I absolutely love it. Um, it's got Big legends, but not the biggest they could be, but at least they're not up in the corner scared and they're more right aligned. Well, at least, no, I think maybe they're center aligned. 
it could be bigger. Anyway, I like the smaller font, though it doesn't seem to quite line up. That function is almost like running off the top of the keyboard, getting ready to just jump. But other than that, I do like the colorway. Um, does seem to have a koozie on the uh, multimedia knob, which uh, I guess it's kind of cool. It's uh, like a foam rubber, and it just kind of fits over the knob. I mean, I can't complain, and it's got a dot to it, so I could, I guess, see where I'm at. Although it's an infinite scroll, potentiator meter. We've got the uh, logo up at the front, like we always do. And if we flip it over, hey, we've got a pocket, a USB-C receiver that seems very familiar, and a switch that seems very familiar there. Uh, we do have two pairs of feet, and we got a couple of screws. So we got clips for the top and bottom case. And we have screws as well holding this in. Definitely be coming back to that to take a look. Now, we do have, even though I think I know what base keyboard this is, it does look to have been updated. So these come with some browns. Are these Otomu? Yes, they appear to be. Yeah, so these are some Otomu brown. And they're actually lubed. There's no pain. So uh, that's definitely a nice thing to see. Uh, let's see what we have here. We do have an IXPE sheet. And we have a PET film below it. Very nice. And feels like a silicone rubber below the PCB. And for the plate, not only is a flex cut plate, it, is it FR4? No, I think it's PC. Yeah, I want to say it's PC. Let's take a look under the stabilizer real quick. Oh my goodness. I think we got some lubrication on there. But we actually have pads where the uh, stabilizers lock into place, which I have not seen before, but I could say. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of grease in there. A lot more than's necessary. I, mean, I could probably grease another pair of stabilizers with it. <laughs> but I don't feel any screw on the stabilizer holes. So we're probably stuck with these. That's what we want. I'm still kind of surprised at how nice the switch is. I had to put these back on. Well, the stabs feel a little bit mushy, but nothing that a little bit of tweaking. Um, I just clean them up and re-lube them. And I think that would take care of that, but they're not. not. Also helps that the key is down all the way. A bit of ticking on the space bar, but other than that, it's not bad at all. Oh. It sounds pretty good. It, it for what it has for some Otemu Browns, I think it sounds pretty good. A different pair of switches, uh, I think would make the biggest difference. So taking a look at the keycaps, we do have 1.5 millimeter thickness, which is on the higher end range for die sub preloaded keycaps on pre-builds. So that's pretty good. Um, the lights are definitely nice and bright. Has some decent RGBs, which is kind of what I'd expect. It's kind of what I expect from Gamma K. But um, just as a quick overview, I mean. I got to say, this isn't a bad uh, little keyboard. Um, it is 
It appears to be built similarly to the NJ80, TH80s um, out there, but it does seem to have upgrades. Um, obviously, one of them being that it's actually gasket mounted. And so I'm going to be interested to uh, get in here and see what's actually going on. But uh, and see how different the construction is with this one. But that I will save for the longer video. Let's move on to the next keyboard. And here we have the standard Gamma K TK75. It looks to have a set of, um, I think they're called programmer keycaps. I believe I have a couple sets of these. And I would guess they are die sub. Yep, they are die sub. And they are uh, about 1.3 millimeters. So they're a little bit thinner than the SE um, die sub cherry keycaps. They they do feel like PBT, and usually die sub is PBT. Now we do have the um, silent Pegasus switches on here, which really does silence it up. It's nice. Not too many keyboards come silent out of the box. Very few um, stabilizers. Let's see what we got under here. Uh, again, we have probably a little bit too much lubrication. Uh, these will probably be a be a good idea to actually take out, clean up. But they are well attached to the plate. A little bit of wiggle, but not much at all. And just out of curiosity, It's a steel plate. <sighs> well, I guess you can't win them all. I'm trying to figure out why this is the standard edition and um, the SE is not the better edition as it had a PC plate. So. Space bar definitely could use a little bit of tuning. When I come back to do the full review, I'll make sure to do a couple of things that I think will help make the space bar sound a lot better and a lot more silent because right now that's, now that's, compared to the rest of the keyboard, it's just, it doesn't match. Um, we still got the cozy though on the um, switch and I don't know, I kind of like it. I don't know if there to protect it, but. I kind of like it. It just makes the uh, knob a little bit bigger, gives it a little bit more easier traction. And I do like the keycaps. Um, it's a nice, clean colorway, big legends, and uh, decently thick. And here we are with the Gamma K TK75 HE Edition Hall Effect Magnetic. So this one, um, we have the Mizu colorway, and it's actually appear to be Double shot, are they? Hey, they are double shot. I feel like they could be ABS, but I'll have to look that up. Let's see what the thickness of these are. All right, 1.5. So doing pretty good here um, as far as the thickness of the keycaps go. They're all pretty decent. Um, 1.5 millimeter. I do hope they're PBT. I'll have to check on the specs, uh, which I, do, I will do when I come back to it. Um, I like the colorway. I like the way it looks. Let's check out the stabilizers here. Oh, good. We're not like loaded up with, uh, with grease on here or anything. And it appears we have an aluminum plate. So no steel plate, but aluminum plate. Very nice. Much better than a steel plate for sure. And we have the HP switches, which have a grayish bottom, an orange top, and a dark navy blue stem. Nothing at the bottom, but the hole for the magnet. And on the PCB, I guess the um, 
The sensor is below the PCB or built into the PCB, but all we really see is the LED and some traces. Keyboard's quite loud. Um, I don't know if we're lacking some dampening in here or what. It does feel kind of light. It sounds loud, but not necessarily pleasant. Once I do the full review, I'll jump into it and see um, what it could be, if it needs a little bit of dampening or whatever. I mean, obviously, after we do the stock. But I just noticed this one doesn't come with the koozie. I kind of like the knob koozie. But I'll have to look into it further to see if it's actually just there as shipping protection or if it's just a new thing. But... That aluminum plate's loud, and actually the hollowness of it, I think this would actually make a great base for like a good clicky switch, and maybe even some uh, either taller SA keycaps or some um, no sculpt like XDA or even MDA keycaps. But again, we will come back to it. We will do the full uh, review each one individually. Um, I'll probably do stock and then maybe modify a thing here here or there or do a comparison. But if you guys have any questions regarding any of these keyboards, something you'd like me to take a look at when I do dive in, uh, when I do my in-depth dive in, then please put them down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed my video, a thumbs up, a subscribe really does go a long way with the YouTube algorithm gods. These are the TK75s, the new boards from Gamma K, a company that's been around for uh, a little while. And like I said, the LK67 is just always going to have a place in my heart. Anyway, fellow humans, until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.